Gee, I know two hours our amazing story bridge, one of the most beautiful bridges in the world. But it was made by, believe me, it was made by this stuff. Come on, T-Rox. Too much crazy juice on your cornflakes. Nope, there it is. This is cyanobacteria. There's a whole group of these little fellas. This is a cryptobiotic soil crust in an arid area. We're going to talk about this. But these little fellas make it possible for us to have this. And the modern world certainly runs on this, this is steel. And uh, it also created this in Western Australia, this amazing red landscape we have over there, and an even slightly more amazing red landscape in Mohub. I've been here, it hurts your eyes, it's so red. Anyway, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Thanks for that, Will. This was the Earth about three billion years ago. It's very much pinker than it is today. There's stromatolites in the foreground there. Now, it, about two and a half billion years ago, 2.7, these little fellas evolved, cyanobacteria, and they had a party trick. There we go, all that way back. They learned how to photosynthesize. They could turn sunlight into sugar and oxygen, which is the big fella. These are oxygen levels in the earth going back 2.73, all of a sudden they start to go up. Now the reason they didn't go up straight away was there was a chemical in the oceans that was absorbing all that oxygen. It was called iron. And here it is, this is ferrous iron, as we know, which is rust. And there's another type of iron oxide as well called ferric iron. And this just grabbed all the oxygen for a really long time, billions of years. And when there was none left, it all went into the atmosphere, but it precipitated out because this is not soluble in water and it formed our banded iron formations all around the world and they are absolutely glorious. She couldn't have picked a better colour swimsuit, could she really? And here they are here. These things are kilometres thick in places. They're all over the world, particularly in Western Australia. Well, they were all over the world. They've just been eroded away. And of course, we mine these deposits and we use them to make steel iron and steel. These are the little fellow stromatolites. This is a cyanobacteria colony that fixes minerals and here's a cross section of it. This is a fossilized one from a few billion years ago. You can still see the bacterial mats in it. This is this stuff. This is spirulina. This is not an algae, even though they call it an algae, a blue-green algae. It is not an algae. An algae is a multi-celled animal. This is a bacteria. This is an algae, multi-celled animal, plant, sorry, not animal, multi-celled plant, and uh, it photosynthesizes. This is also an algae, but I assure you what we call blue-green algae is not an algae. It's a bacteria, and here it is here. Now, this stuff is very important because it can be very helpful. It can also be very harmful. Uh, I would certainly not, that's not a glove he's wearing. That's this crap sticking to his hand. So let's see what else these little fellas got up to. <laughs> well, folks, we've got a whole pile of cyanobacteria here. They're going to be, you know, photosynthesizing along, and uh, but like everything, they die and they sprinkle down onto the ocean floor, and they do this for billions of years. And they form this stuff. This is oil shale. And most petroleum deposits have oil shale associated with them. And uh, he's, uh, they turn into this stuff, crude oil. Don't put your hands in it. I think I've said that before. Just don't do it. So most crude oil deposits look like this. There's an oil shale somewhere. Uh, and the oil's being squeezed out of it. It goes up and the gas and the oil that are in there get trapped. And then we pump it out. Mostly. Not always, though, because there's another type of uh, oil deposit called oil sand or tar sand here it is here looks like uh, caribou shit to me but you know it probably is this is from canada of course it's, it's the main deposit there are others but they've got quite a lot of this 
Canada's a big place, and that is a very large bit of it. Mining, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit intrusive and a bit uh, nasty, but no worse than digging coal up, I suppose. Here's their big uh, oil sands area in northern Alberta. So it is a little disruptive to the countryside, but, you know, we need petrol. What you don't always see is these things. This is the same area. Remind you of somewhere? Mm, they're extraction wells. Looks a bit like the Darling Downs. I've just latched us onto one of Elon Musk's uh, Starlink satellites just to whiz over the United States briefly. This is the height they orbit at, the low Earth orbit. Cruising down the coast of California. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop off the satellite uh, over LA. Because this whole LA area is an oil producing area. All of it off the coast, onshore, it's everywhere. But right in the middle of town here, uh, like if the Brisbane version would be Aspley, is uh, tar pits. There they are there, the La Brea tar pits, where the petroleum oozes to the surface. Trapped animals over tens of thousands of years. And uh, there we go. And it's pretty close to uh, downtown LA. There you go. Now, Aspley. I said Aspley because we've got mud springs at Aspley. And you should go up and check them out one day. They're easy to find. Well, I've got a video on it somewhere you can dig out. You can get the bus there if you've got a car. It's really easy. It drops you right over the road. Anyway, uh, I can feel a commercial coming on. Commercial time. Hey, gringos, if you want to help T-Rox fight for justice in this lawless land... You can buy me a coffee, because T-Rox runs on coffee, and help me stare down these other hombres. Because you know, coffee is the root of no evil. Well, another thing these little champions do is they form cryptobiotic soil crusts in arid areas. These areas of the world would be uninhabitable without these soil crusts. So let's have a look at this. This is what they look like close up. Little colonies of various things. But this is, this is cyanobacteria here forming these strands. This is so critical in arid areas. This is what a mature soil crust looks like. And they're quite fragile. This is actually in the United States, but so is that obviously. But those plants could not survive. They could not be there without the, that subsoil bacterial crust. Uh, this one's actually in Australia, out in the uh, Simpson Desert. And these little bacteria, they break the minerals down and make them available for the plants. Without them, you've got sand or just dust. So this is a mature crust. You can see a little plant growing in there. And that bacteria, there are billions of cyanobacteria in that soil and other creatures as well, holding these soil crusts together, but primarily cyanobacteria. So very mature. And this is actually a mohab. So here we are. I, th I don't have to tell you what that is, but none of this will, the spin effects, those um, she oaks, none of them could be there without this soil crust forming. And when it gets broken, this is the sort of things that start to happen. But even in sand, this stuff works. So you can see the red there. That's the, the iron left over from the work of their very, very, very distant relatives. But these things are also very fragile. Uh, some of these crusts are only a few centimetres thick. And they're right near the surface because they need the heat and they need the light. So, of course, doing this is not a particularly great idea. Now, if you have to do it, you have to do it. But as you can see from these two uh, hard-hooved animals, uh, they've left quite a few tracks, and those tracks are going to be there for a really, really long time because that crust has been damaged. Here it is here. It's been turned to powder. Now, it rains in the desert. It just does, but, and it rains very heavily in the desert. And it will repair itself, but it will take a very long time. So, yeah, be mindful. Walk in someone else's tracks. This is the country that you get when it's working well. It looks good. You get a biodiversity. You get the plants. When you get the plants, you get the insects. And you get the cute little birds that eat the insects. There's the whole range right there sitting on that branch. Um, and if you don't have enough of it, you end up with that. So that's the work of all their relatives there. Back over the millennia, the eons. Um, Car for scale, 
little bit more here. The McDonald Range is just a beautiful part of Australia. Some of these sand dunes, by the way, in the Simpson Desert are the longest in the world. I just thought I'd show you this CO2 in, water in, what comes out? Glucose and oxygen. Oxygen, wow. So that's the glue that holds all that together is actually a glucose-based glue. And what does oxygen do? Well, it goes up into the upper atmosphere and it gets turned into ozone and cuts down the ultraviolet and allows us to actually exist on this planet. So let's have a little look at someone else having a few words. More than four billion years ago, this piece of rock was formed as a part of the original crust of Mars. After billions of years, it broke from the surface and began a 16 million year journey through space that would end here on Earth. It arrived in a meteor shower 13,000 years ago. And in 1984, an American scientist on an annual US government mission to search for meteors on Antarctica picked it up and took it to be studied. Appropriately, it was the first rock to be picked up that year, rock number 84001. Today, rock 84001 speaks to us across all those billions of years and millions of miles. It speaks of the possibility of life. Well, Bill, that didn't work out too well, but that little structure on that micrometeorite they thought was a colony of Martian cyanobacteria. And frankly, if you're going to find life on Mars, that's more than likely what you're going to find. But no oxygen in the atmosphere, so mm, long gone, I think. So the oxygen you breathe, the ozone that protects you when you go outside, the petrol in your car, the steel in your car, the steel in the story bridge, uh, spirulina if you take it. My missus takes it, she loves it. Um, it's just an amazing little creature that still exists today, and it has existed in trillions and trillions and billions of trillions over the years. Uh, one would say the biomass of Earth is mainly cyanobacteria. We are parasites infecting the Earth that the cyanobacteria inhabits. Anyway, till next time. Keep, Keep rocking. T-Rox out. out.